To solve an absolute value equation, I want to start uh, by looking at a very simple example. So just the absolute value of x is equal to something like 7, much like in example one below. Uh, it's easy enough to think about the two numbers that make this equation true. So the absolute value takes a positive number and makes it positive. So you can check that. Well, if I look at the absolute value of 7, is that equal to 7? And the answer is yes, because 7 is 7 after you simplify it. But there's a second solution. If you take negative 7 and place that into this equation, well, the absolute value makes that negative become positive. And so, you know, is this true? Well, it still is because it reduces to also 7 equals 7. So the trick to solving any equation of this form is to break it up into two pieces. You can say, well, x has got to be 7, but also x is negative 7 would work as well. So using this idea in example 1, it doesn't matter how complicated the expression is inside of the absolute value. All I'm going to do is say, forget the absolute value. Just take 2x minus 1 and set that equal to 7. That would have to give me a solution, so I'm going to write that down. 2x minus 1 is 7. Another one, though, is if I take 2x minus 1 and set that equal to negative 7. That would have to give me a solution as well. All we're saying is make the thing inside the absolute value either 7 or negative 7. So now that the absolute value symbol is gone, we're just left with two linear equations that are very simple to solve. So let's do that. For this one on the left, we have 2x minus 1 is 7. I guess I'll start by adding 1 to both sides. And so we get 2x is equal to 8. I would then divide both sides by 2. And we have our answer, x is equal to 4. And this one's easy enough to check just by thinking about, well, if I put 4 in place of x, 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 1 is 7. And the absolute value of 7 is, in fact, 7. Okay, but for this second equation, it's going to be very similar. I'm going to still add 1 to both sides. So I get 2x is equal to negative 6, so that's different. But I'm still going to divide both sides by 2. And once I do that, I get x is equal to negative 3. I think this one is simple enough to think about too, where, okay, if you put a negative 3 here and double it, that is negative 6 negative 6 minus 1 more is now a negative 7. Okay, and the absolute value of negative 7 becomes positive 7. So just from you know thinking about the solutions that we got, I know 4 works, I know negative 3 works, and there are no other solutions to this equation. But this is the general strategy. Set up two equations to solve for x. But now in example two, what if your equation becomes just a little bit more complicated? So it's not just the absolute value is equal to a number, but here I have two absolute values equal to each other. One's the absolute value of x minus five, and we have, is that equal to the absolute value of eight minus two x? So a strategy for this is gonna be very similar to what we had in the previous example. So I'm gonna write down one equation that works for sure. I'm just going to completely ignore all of the absolute values and just write x minus 5 equals 8 minus 2x. Okay, what this is saying is if the things inside the absolute value are the same, if they're identical, like if it was like 10 and 10, well, it still works in the absolute value equation because if you would take the absolute value of those numbers, the equality would still hold true. So for this reason, it's very easy to get one equation. Just ignore the absolute values and set those two things equal to each other. What might not be as obvious is there is going to be a second solution. I'm going to take x minus 5, but I'm going to set that equal to the negative of the other side. So the reason this works back in our original equation is if I took the absolute value, it would cancel this negative, making the two things still equal to each other. So all I'll do is solve these two equations and see if they make the original one true. 
Okay, so uh, on the left, I think what I'll do is add 2x to both sides. So I'll add 2x here and here. I get 3x minus 5 is equal to 8. Okay. And then next, I will add 5 to both sides. And I get that 3x is equal to 13. Dividing both sides by 3, I get that x is equal to 13 thirds. So, okay, we'll check to see if that is true. Now let's look at the second equation. I have x minus 5 is equal to now negative 8 minus 2x. To solve this equation, I'm first going to distribute the negative. So I get x minus 5 is equal to negative 8, but it'll be plus 2x. So I guess for this one, I'm going to subtract x from both sides. So I get negative 5 on the left, negative 8 plus x on the right. I'll now add 8 to both sides. And that gives me a final answer of 3 is equal to x, or x is equal to 3, whatever, that's the same thing. And both of these should be solutions to the equation in example 2. So an easy one to check would be x is equal to 3. So let's write that one out. So that's going to be the absolute value of 3 minus 5. You know, is that equal to 8 minus 2 times 3 in absolute value? Okay, on the left side, we get the absolute value of negative 2. On the right side, that's 8 minus 6, which is positive 2. So look at that. What happened here is by making one of those things negative at the start, we get the situation where you have a negative 2 and a positive 2. Those are different, except after you take the absolute value, you still get 2 is equal to 2. So definitely x is equal to 3 is a solution. Let's actually check um, 13 thirds to see what happens there. This one's going to be a little bit messier, but let's see what we get. 13 thirds minus 5. Is that equal to 8 minus 2 times 13 thirds? Okay, so on the left, I need a denominator of 3. So that means I'm multiplying the 5 by 3. That is 15. And on the right side, if I want a denominator of 3, I have to multiply 8 by 3. That's 24. I'm subtracting 2 times 13, which is 26, and that's over 3. Okay, on the left, I get negative 2 thirds. On the right, I also get negative 2 thirds. And in absolute value, that's 2 thirds is equal to 2 thirds. So those are both the same. This means that if you just set the two equal to each other, you will end up with the same number at the very end, and therefore an absolute value definitely still have equality. But if you take the equations, make one the negative, leave one alone, your answer will have a negative, it'll have a positive, but an absolute value, it'll reduce to the same amount. So you don't have to check the work every single time for this uh, type of question, but really, if you can understand, set up one equation, set up another, and then solve them, uh, that is all you'd have to do for this example.